This is the release mechanism for the towing hook at the back of the Churchill. So we're going to reinstall that one. Now based on the plans, it should be positioned here somewhere, but the plans are not really clear on that. As you can see, we only have this drawing and it's positioned here. Luckily, Eve took some pictures and we have a much better look at it here. So it's mounted on an, under an angle. So that means that we can determine the right holes where it should fit. So the wire will come through these two supports. And then the release mechanism will be mounted like so. So I'm not sure why the other two holes are in that L bracket, but yeah, that's the way it's supposed to be mounted. Probably if we look at the schematic, the initial position was here. But for some reason they mounted it like that. Mystery solved. The reason why the release mechanism is mounted in such an angle is because in the original position here it would be blocking the uh, cable which leads to this uh, petrol tank switch. So that's probably why it was mounted in this position instead. Rob and Wart put everything in primer. We have the uh, armor plates for the suspension and the brackets there. Those are for the track tensioning system. And here we have the cables for the doors. Next item to be installed is the petrol primer lever. And that one will be mounted uh, here. Meanwhile, Rob and Wart have fixed the latching pin mechanism for one of the latches at the front. So one of these pins was broken off, so they replaced it with a cut-off bolt. And now it's working again. So let's reinstall it. Latches have been put into position again. So let's check if it works. And the fuel priming handle has also been reinstated. And this is the block that uh, allows the front gunner to pan his machine gun. So we're ready to hoist that one into the tank. Almost in position to be lowered through the go driver's hatch. And it's almost in position. Just need to move it a bit forward and then pull the chains through that hole in the ventilation cover so that we can get closer to the mounting position. We readjusted the cables, or the chains rather, so we can get much closer with a massive piece of metal to its final position. Ja, dat is goed. Ik ga nog een 
So the first block is affixed and it's moving quite smoothly. So now, now it's time for the second piece, which allows for the tilt of the gun. Installed. And as you can see, it's moving in all directions. Smoothly, perfect fit. Does it fit too much? And this is what the Besa machine gun mount looks like from the front. Still some white areas there that need to be painted, but it's moving smoothly. A couple of smaller things that have been added. A electrical cable feed through, through the bulkhead. And then here near the driver's hatch at the top, this is the filler port for the oil for the control box. And this is the view from the top for that filler port. Still need to look for the plug that screws into it. The handle for the machine gun has also been fitted. And there's a bracket that goes under here that we've also put in primer. So now it's as usual, a matter of finding the right bolts again, and then that can be mounted as well. We managed to locate a couple of more pieces for the uh, Besa machine gun mount. Uh, first of all, there's this piece, which goes in here. 
then we have two plates, one that goes here on this side and then likewise on the other side. I had a hard time finding those because I thought first it was one uh, square piece, but it's basically two brackets. And then the mount into which the machine gun slides managed to find that one as well. The only thing that is still missing is two pieces of metal which slide in here and there's a knob here which we also found uh, and that allows the two pieces to be brought together which tightens this one here and basically prevents the uh, vertical motion or basically locks the gun vertical position but those two pieces are still somewhere to be located so I'm thinking whether it's a wise idea to already mount all of the rest or if we should wait until we find those two pieces because it's easier to access because basically this one needs to slide out a bit to make free space for the first block to slide in let me zoom in a bit if you can see so yeah as usual, I'm going to spend a couple of hours trying to find the missing parts. But they'll turn up sooner or later. And just to show what we were talking about in the cutaway drawing is basically these two pieces that I marked in blue. And that's the uh, wheel to tighten them. We managed to install the two pieces for the gun. We didn't find the mechanism here, the two missing metal blocks, but we found something else, so that's a positive. Uh, you can also see here, let me zoom in, the mechanism to secure the gun in place. Like so. And in this position you can slide in the gun. So hopefully we'll still find those two blocks at a later date and then we can still mount them. Should not be too much work. Just slide this cylinder out of the way. We didn't find that missing piece but we found something else. This latch here. Now this is used not to secure uh, the door in a closed position, rather to keep the door opened. So the latch is used to secure the door in a closed position and you use this latch to keep it in an open position. I'm not sure why that would be needed because it's a very small door, but okay, we managed to find it.